Okay guys, so I'm going to do the best I can to explain the LS swap plan for my 450SL. Alright guys, so as you see here is the uh, little engine stand picked up at Harbor Freight like most guys. Uh, they're only like 60 bucks and you get the 20% coupon, so somewhere in the neighborhood of 48 bucks or so. Um, decent little stand. So this is for the LS that is soon to be coming home. It's still being removed from the donor vehicle, but when it does uh, come home, we're ready to drop that in the stand. Guys, it's raining outside, so I just got to make this quick, but uh, as you can see here in the back of the truck, down there, there is a transmission, and I've also got an engine crane that I borrowed off my buddy. Uh, actually, used to be my engine crane that I sold to him years ago because I really wasn't using it much, and now, wouldn't you know, I need it again. So anyway, um, this is a Mercedes transmission. It's blown up, but it has the same bolt pattern uh, on the housing to mate to the engine of uh, the 450SL that I have here that we're working on. The idea is I'm going to be making an adapter plate to mount the Chevy LS V8 to the Mercedes transmission and I needed a template. So without taking my engine and transmission out of the car, the idea is to use this housing just as a template so I can put the bolt holes in the right place on the adapter plate and get that uh, set up for the Mercedes. So basically I'll still be able to run and drive the Mercedes um, you know as it is with the original motor uh, even though it's probably not in fantastic shape at least until I'm ready to do the LS swap and drop the LS in I can drive this around and not have to worry about pulling it to figure out what I need to do for an adapter to mount the uh, the Chevy engine to the existing transmission which is what I've decided to do versus using a GM transmission so I'll explain a little bit about that more later, but that's it for now, guys. All right, so what I've decided to do is use the existing Mercedes transmission and mate that to the Chevy LS engine as opposed to using uh, a Chevy 4L60E or 4L80E transmission that naturally bolts to the back of the LS. The reason for this is because um, if I use the stock factory Mercedes transmission, the shifter location inside the car will be exactly the same. The shift pattern is the same. I won't have to modify anything there. The rear drive shaft doesn't have to be modified. Nothing would change. So if I could simply mate the LS engine to the Mercedes transmission, that's the best option. Um, some people would prefer to put the entire late model GM drivetrain into the vehicle, and I get it. Um, yeah, you'll have the overdrive transmission, you'll have the electronically controlled shifting and all of that. Um, but you'd have to modify a whole lot of other things. You may have to modify, you know, the cross member on the car. You definitely have to modify the rear drive shaft, possibly the length to have it rebalanced. And just getting through an LS swap is enough of a task um, by itself without having to worry about changing all those other things. So here's the plan. Uh, using this diagram, you can see that with, with any uh, engine to transmission made up of an automatic transmission, you're going to have just a few things going on here. You've got the flex plate on the back of the engine here. Here shows the torque converter inside the automatic transmission. And at the front of the torque converter, you can see the little snout uh, that basically centers up on the back of the engine in the crankshaft. So um, in the old days, there were a lot of people that would mate uh, Chevy small block 350 to a, a Buick Pontiac Oldsmobile type transmission and there are a lot of different companies that offer adapter plates that uh, allow you to do that and they're very thin they're about uh, 5 16 7 inch thick but this is essentially what it is in the the little red marks that I've made here that's a typical Chevy uh, bolt pattern and the Buick has these extra or not necessarily extra, but different hole positions uh, along with using these here. So it was very easy to put this plate on the back of a Chevy engine and bolt it where those red bolt holes are showing, and then bolt the Buick Pontiac Oldsmobile transmission to the back of this plate with the extra yellow holes. Um, so what I've decided, coming back here to the, uh, let's see, to the Mercedes setup, 
what I'm going to do is basically the same thing. Rather than starting from scratch and having to drill all the holes for both the engine and the transmission, the LSV8 has the same essential bolt pattern on the back of the engine as an old small block Chevy 350. Therefore, I've got the Mercedes 722.0 transmission in my car, which is this here. And here's the front of the transmission with the um, torque converter showing. And you can see it also has two different starter pockets depending on the vehicle that they had it in. You could have the starter on either side, but it's almost got like a, a round bolt pattern here. And then if you look at the back of, this is the back of a, a GM transmission, which is obviously the same bolt pattern as the back of the engine. Uh, this is the arrangement. And once again, you can see this triangular shape that I mentioned uh, on the adapter plate. So what we're going to do is I have already ordered one of these Chevy V8 to Buick Pontiac Oldsmobile adapter plates. That way I can bolt this directly to the back of my LS engine. And I've got plenty of open space here on this uh, plate because of the uh, enormous size of the Buick Pontiac Oldsmobile transmission case. Um, it leaves a lot of area here that was untouched. So once I bolt this to the back of the LS engine, I'll have all this area where I can transfer the holes um, of the Mercedes transmission bell housing onto this plate and through bolt it to be able to mate my transmission to the LS. So it shouldn't be that big a deal. Um, although you have to remember this is 5 16 of an inch thick so that changes a few things. And Let's go back to that diagram and I'll explain. So it's essentially going to be right here behind the flex plate. It's 5 16 thick which means that this snout on the torque converter would be 5 16 set back along with the whole transmission set back from the crankshaft. So um, as with many LS engines and different transmission uh, combinations, you can just buy a little adapter ring um, that fits in the back of the crankshaft here and it basically uh, adds that 5 16 distance that you need for the snout to fit into for the female side and then the male side goes in the back of the crankshaft. So I can do the same thing. I'll make a, a little ring that fits in the back of the crankshaft and one that fits the snout on the Mercedes transmission and everything should go together just fine. Now the torque converter, um, depending on how far the snout sticks out, basically you can check how flush it is with the, the face of the, the transmission case. Um, I'll have to figure out what the spacing is to be able to get that snout to fit into the crankshaft But that's really what centers the whole transmission on the back of the engine and that's kind of key um, to to positioning everything so Once I get the uh, the LS engine From the junkyard where it's uh, being removed from the donor vehicle right now We can uh, fit this up along with the plate that's on its way in and I'll show you the whole assembly don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to follow the rest of the build. Thanks, guys.